Hey everyone. So I have a fun little project that I've started on recently. Uh, this machine is a small cast iron manual machine that I picked up for cheap recently. Uh, it's known generally as a patcher or a shoe patcher machine. Uh, and you can think of it essentially as a, a fully manual sewing machine that's designed to patch shoes and bags and other things that are difficult to fix on a regular sewing machine. Uh, it has a really long arm, which helps you get inside uh, the you know the bottom of a boot or a shoe. Um, it's got a really beefy needle and lever arm so that you can patch heavy materials like leather. Uh, this particular model is very cheap. It's commonly known online just as the Chinese shoe patcher. Uh, it's a really rough casting made out of cast iron uh, and some steel aluminum parts. Uh, it works for some definition of the word, but it is a really crude machine. And the idea is that it's cheap and you're supposed to take it out onto a street so that you can patch people's shoes as they walk by and they show up, hand you a few bucks and then you patch their shoe. Various people online have ways to fix them or make them better, so I'll be going through some of those later. Uh, but the big thing I'm interested in is getting rid of this manual crank and adding a motor so that it's a, a motorized leather machine and then I'm going to mount it more stably and uh, put it to use on some leather projects. So for this first video essentially I'll be building an adapter V pulley that mounts onto this cast iron crank wheel so that I can attach a motor. It was supposed to be a quick and easy project and of course I don't really know what I'm doing yet in the shop so it turned into a bit more of a project than I expected. So I hope you enjoy. There's a couple fun mess ups. And yeah, we'll see you then. Right, so I have no idea if this is gonna work. Uh, I suspect it will not. So this is a stub arbor, but it's meant for slitting saws, meaning it doesn't have a key for this uh, milling cutter. Uh, so I'm kind of expecting it will bind up and then just start spinning on this arbor. Uh, if it doesn't and it works, that's great. It'll make my life a lot easier. Uh, but if this does fail, if it starts spinning, I'll probably just use a regular end mill, uh, a little one, and just go real slowly around the edge. But I figure I'd give this a shot first and see if it works, and hopefully it doesn't throw a milling cutter halfway across the room.
<laughs> okay, so here's a good teaching moment, I guess. Uh, so what happened is that I have this set up on two parallels right here and here. Uh, so these two sides are parallel to each other. Uh, what I didn't think about is these parallels are sitting on the jaws, so there's only a tiny amount right here, and everything's being pinched on the edge of this pulley, so there's not a lot to grab into, which is partially why I have these little shims. Um, and what happened is that even though these are parallel, it got canted up just slightly, and so this side is higher than this side, meaning that when I finally got over here, it was a lot deeper cut than I was expecting, uh, and it ran into this shim I think between the shim and the deeper cut, and then it probably just isn't the most rigid setup in the world. Uh, the thing bucked a little and then grabbed, and now there's this nice big scar across the top. Which is awesome, because now I've got this scar here. I've got <laughs> half surfaced. Uh, over here, I've got the scar from where the head wasn't trammed. So now it looks considerably worse than it did before. And I don't really think I want to keep trying to finish it on this setup because it's a little scary. So I think I might just leave well enough alone and deal with a cosmetically ugly pulley. Which is too bad. Everything was going really well today until this. Ah, live and learn. Against my perhaps better judgment, we're going to try this again. Uh, we've got it clamped right to the table itself. This is actually what I was going to do the first time, but I didn't. I was trying to avoid having to take off the clamps and rearrange, which I guess was a little silly. That's what I get for trying to be fancy. Uh, so we're going to try this. We're going to be very conservative since I've got a bunch of hiccups here we have to go over uh, and just do this slowly. So fingers crossed it doesn't go shooting out that way. Uh, you might need to put some more clamps over here. <laughs> we'll see. Wish me luck. Right, so I had fully intended to do the construction of this V-belt pulley and the disassembly of a hub motor and the fabrication of a mounting bracket and pulley onto the hub motor all in one episode because theoretically, you know, it's not that much work. Uh, but as you saw, I really struggled to get this uh, pulley fabricated on a mill and all the problems that I ran into. So this video took a lot longer than I expected. Long story short, I really need to leave. But I think I'm, at this point I'm gonna cut the video here and then I'll do a quick follow-up video with the disassembly of the hub motor and fabrication of a pulley adapter for that. Thanks for watching, bye.